Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. I'm gonna sh I wanted to show you one more example of how to apply Euler's method with differential equations. I've already done a couple other videos on this topic, but I wanted to show you one more example of how to use an Excel spreadsheet to create your own Euler's method differential equation calculator. And I wanted to show you this example because it's gonna be a great example of how easy it is to manipulate this spreadsheet to completely do a whole nother problem without having to manually create a table and calculate all this stuff on a calculator and go through all these steps. It's gonna save you a ton of time if you have the ability to use a computer or, uh, you know, when you're doing these problems. Um, and these same methods are gonna work on Google Sheets or probably any other spreadsheet software that you're using. They're all gonna have pretty similar functionality, if not exactly the same. And the reason I wanted to show you this type of problem is this is one of the formulas on my calculus 2 study guide you can actually see right over here on the left upper left side of your screen here this is actually a direct you know portion directly from my calculus 2 study guide there's a link down in the description if you want to check that out uh, just push pause on this video real quick click over on that link go grab yourself a copy of that study guide it's available for instant download pdf you could pull it up on your computer you could print it out and have a physical copy whatever you want. It should help save you a ton of time studying for tests, working through homework, whatever you're doing in an integral calculus class. But I want to show you exactly how to use this specific formula on that study guide. So the formula I'm talking about is this Euler's method section. It says basically that Euler's method can be used to approximate values for the solution of some initial value problem that you're given, where basically we have y prime equals some function of x and y, and then we have our initial condition, you know, that y of some x value equals some y value. So in this case, we can see that both of these things have been given to us, right? We know y of 0 is 0, so when x is 0, y is 0, and we also know y prime equals x plus x squared. So those two pieces were given, those are the two pieces we need to be given to use this formula. We also know that we have a step size of h, so in this case we know our step size is 0 0.2, that's going to be our h. And then basically we can use this Euler's method, iterate through this formula a bunch of times, to use our previous x and y estimates to get our next x and y estimates. So how you do this on an Excel spreadsheet is actually going to save you a ton of time. First thing you need to do, these are going to be the kind of columns that we're going to use. We're going to have our n, just to keep track of what step we're on. We're going to have our x sub n minus 1, so that's going to be whatever x value we're on at that step. We're going to start at the x value that was given, right? So our x value that was given is x equals 0, y equals 0. So this x value that we're going to start with is 0. And then similarly, the y value that we're going to start with is also 0, because y of 0 equals 0. Our x and y are both 0. This column here, this f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1, that's just going to be, again, you can see from this formula in my study guide here, when we're given some y prime equals some function of x and y, whatever that function of x and y is, is going to be whatever this column is here. So in this case, we're given y prime equals x plus y squared. So that tells us that our function that we're going to have in this column here is going to use this function x plus y squared. So basically this column, what we're going to do is we're going to create a formula in there that makes it be x plus y squared. So that's just going to be, we're just going to say equals, we're going to click on this cell and type the equal sign. That's going to equal whatever is in our x column for this row, plus whatever is in our y column for this row, squared. Well, squared is the same as saying this column times itself, so I'm just going to say times, again, whatever is in the y column. And then if you just hit enter or return, that's going to automatically calculate what this f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1 is based on the x sub n minus 1 and the y sub n minus 1 that you have in that row. Then what we also need to do is use this final column here to set up a formula that tells us what our y sub n is. Now this y sub n is exactly this formula that's on my calculus 2 study guide here. It's just going to take whatever's in the y sub n minus 1 column plus h, which is your step size, times whatever is in this f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1 column. So again, we're just going to get, we're going to click on this cell here, we're going to click equals, 
and then we're going to put whatever's in our y sub n minus 1 column plus h which is again our step size and here our step size was given as 0 0.2 so we're going to have 0 0.2 times our f of x sub n minus 1 y sub n minus 1 which is exactly what's in this previous column right here so that's it then we're going to hit enter or return now the last thing that we need to figure out here is what are all the n values that we want to look at so to figure out the n values you want to look at basically what you want to look think about is how many steps it's going to take to get from the x value that they gave you in the initial value problem up to the x value that we need to estimate the solution at so you can see in this problem they told us the initial value problem gave us y of 0 equals 0 right so whatever number is right here that is the x value you're starting at so in this case we're starting at x equals 0 and what we have to do is we have to take however many steps that are based on our step size of 0 0.2 and what we're trying to estimate is y of 0 0.4 so this x equals 0 0.4 is the x value that we're trying to get up to. So what you want to think about is how many steps of 0 0.2 do we have to take to get from x equals 0 to x equals 0 0.4. If you want to calculate that, you can do that by just taking your second x value minus your first x value. So 0 0.4 minus 0, and then you divide that by your step size. Well, doing this is just going to give us 0 0.4 over 0 0.2, which is 2. So basically we have to get up to n equals 2. So you're just going to put n1, n2, and that's it. If we had to take more steps, we would just keep counting until we got to whatever number we just calculated right here. We would just put 3, 4, 5, 6 going down in these columns. In this case, we only need to take two steps. In part B of this problem, we're going to have to do more steps. So I'll show you how to do that. Now what you want to do is come down to your second row and remember these these first two x and y values we plugged in manually we were given that those are zero and zero so what we have to do now is come up with a formula for this cell and this cell based on our previous x and y values to kind of calculate what should go here so to do that all we have to do is for the x we'll start with the x for the x sub n minus one to get from one x sub n minus one to the next x sub n minus one, all you have to do is add your step size. So this cell here is always just gonna be equals your previous x sub n minus one plus whatever your step size is. In this case, we know that our step size is 0 0.2. The problem gave us that. And then you just hit enter and that'll automatically calculate what your next x value is. To get your next y value, all you have to do is copy this y sub n from the previous row. We don't actually have to do any calculations with that. As we step through these steps, we're just taking our, X, our y sub n and putting it in the next column for y sub n minus 1. Then, since these two columns have an actual formula in these two cells, we can just copy this formula down to the next row and copy this formula down to the next row. And what that's going to do is it's automatically going to take the x and y from this row to calculate what number goes here and then this cell is going to automatically take the y from this row and the, the you know result that we get from plugging in our f our x and y into our function f and it's going to calculate what goes there so what that tells us is once we get up to the step that we need to get up to n equals 2 whatever number is in this column here, this rightmost column, this is going to be the answer that we're looking for, right? We just figured out that by, based on this step size of 0 0.2, we just estimated y of 0 0.4. That's just going to be whatever's right here. So that's going to be this answer for part A. But remember, we do have a part B here. So what we have to do now is repeat part A with a step size of 0 0.1. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because it shows you how easy and scalable this process is. So what now we have a step size of 0 0.1. So really that only came into play in two places. First of all, we have to adjust the formula that we have in this cell right here, because remember, right here we have y sub n equals y sub n minus one plus h times your f, right? So our f is obviously gonna be the same. Our y sub n minus one is gonna be the same. 
but our step size, which is h, is changing now from 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. So we want to change this formula to be 0 0.1. Okay, we can actually get rid of these cells for now. We want to go ahead and kind of edit things a little bit. Now the other thing that our step size is going to change is how many ends we need to get up to. Because remember, we figured out that we only needed two to get up to n equals two based on the fact that we took the x value we want to get up to, which is 0 0.4, minus the x value we started with, which is zero, right? Those two things are not changing based on the fact that we're changing our step size. But then we divided that by our step size, which was 0 0.2, now it's 0 0.1. So now we actually need to do 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.1, which is not two, it's actually gonna be four. So now we have to go up to n equals four. So that just means we're just gonna add two more rows here to n equals four. And then other than that, all these formulas that we have in these four columns are all set. So all we really have to do is drag these formulas down however far we need to get. Oh, actually I do need to edit one more thing. This formula here used our step size as well. Remember it was the previous plus our step size, which now our step size is 0 0.1. So now that we've adjusted everywhere where our step size shows up, we can drag that down to our bottom row here. And again, we can drag all of these down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna automatically populate this table with the bottom right cell in our table being our answer. So now this tells us really quickly that we're now with taking four steps instead of the two that we had before, our estimate of our solution, uh, um, or plugging in 0 0.4 into our solution of this initial value problem is 0.601. So now that's gonna be the solution to part B of this problem. So now you can see how easy it is to adjust this Euler's method differential equation calculator spreadsheet that we just made to adjust for any problem, any step size, any you know initial value problem they gave you, whatever it is, it's really easy to kind of adjust it to line up with the problem you're given. So if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you're notified of all my new videos. Together I'm sure we'll be able to get you some great grades in your calculus class. Thank you and see you next time.